What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel Ozark season one episode two Whew. Episode one was uh, as I put it last time wild I mean probably a little recency bias here and if anyone's got other ideas throw them in the comments down below but legit from all the stuff that we've seen that might have been potentially one of the wildest and craziest first episodes of a series ever. All right, a first episode. I mean, we met Marty Bird. He's the top money launderer for the number two drug cartel in Mexico. As he put it when his wife was getting mad at him, like, you want to role play? All right, well, I'm, this is who I am. What would you, like, that whole situation was just crazy. And this dude got a video sent to him of his wife cheating and- Proceeds to watch it. Well, he's with clients, no big deal. And then later that night, watches it while they're hanging out, watching TV together. So creeps. He I, then... <laughs> I, I couldn't do... I don't... Whatever. He then has visions of hooking up with a prostitute, and he's just kind of doing his own business by himself in the car, and this is a work zone. He can't do that here. Oh, damn. Sorry. And, you know, everything that was introduced to us was just, like, top-notch intense. We met this dude, Dell, who proceeded to shoot like four or five people, just yes. boom, done. I mean, like through the door, shove them into barrels. We're dealing with some high stakes shit here. And <laughs> they threw a dude out of a really high story building. That was so nuts. Which is like, that was, that was probably like outside of like the really quick, like, oh, a father should never see a son die shooting moment like him falling like that was probably the most shocking moment from the episode oh my god that felt so like i mean not that i've ever seen that happen but i you know that seemed realistic yeah it, it was just absolutely insane and just the way marty was walking over he's just like boom like he's just like uh i gotta go mm, yeah that's the dude that was uh sleeping with my wife okay great and, you know, he was presented with an opportunity to take his wife out, and he decided not to. And I think, look, when you're presented with a situation that he's been presented with, it probably makes a lot of sense to keep your wife around, regardless of how angry or mad you are. Like, in that world, it probably makes a lot of sense. Like, he probably had to debate it a little bit, be like, oh, she's terrible, do I just get rid of her? But it's like, I'm sure she's way more valuable to him, considering what he has to go and do. Considering they have kids, yes. you know, I would never condone anything to like, just because your significant other was doing something bad. I would never like, oh yeah, that, that deserves to happen in the context of this world and what this show is doing right now, already just one episode in it, like seemed like the way he was talking, like with the whole story that played out with the cashier and he just was like, you got to fire her. It wasn't the first time that she stole from me. It's just the first time you caught her. That, that to me felt like, oh shit, he just signed his wife's death certificate right there. That's what I totally thought was going to happen. And it played out differently. And yeah, I just feel like, and now he's got to go to the Ozarks and go launder a shit ton of money based off of everything that's been happening. And Dell trusts him. He gave him the money and like bought his van and like all this shit that he, I mean, he turned in a shit ton of money to, to like make him even. Seven, over seven mil. And he's going to basically use that money. He's going to clean it and prove that he could do what he needs to do. But it probably makes a lot more sense for him to travel with an entire family. Yes. To go do exactly that what he needs to do. looks more safe. Yeah. And considering the business that he's dealing with right now, he probably wouldn't have a lot of time to raise his two kids the way they need to be handled. Because, again, he's got a lot of work to do. That's a lot of money that needs to get laundered. And, you know, he's probably got a lot of pressure on him because people are going to die if it doesn't happen. And he basically listed off his entire family in no one particular order, which I would assume Marty would be last on the list that he, that Dell gave him. So, like, the stakes are really high right out the gate. Like, this show is intense. Like, even the opening moments where Marty was just talking, like, he was just doing a VO, but he was doing all this stuff. Like, the tone, the music... Just the shots, everything was dark. We didn't know what he was doing. Like, it immediately set a tone of just like, damn, this is tense. What the hell's going to play out? Yeah. This show, right out the gate, just set an insane tone. 
<laughs> I am so ready to see Just where this goes. Bit. Just a little bit. I mean, the Lake of the yes. Ozarks. <laughs> the Ozark looks like a really beautiful place. At least they get to go someplace nice with a lot of like waterfront. I would think that if you had to go, you would be resenting it no matter how beautiful it was because of what you're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be able... It doesn't seem like he's going to be able to enjoy himself much. So, I mean, I guess take in as much as you can considering the circumstances that you're dealing with. I'd rather be waterfront than anywhere else under those circumstances. So, I guess got away at least some of the positives you know just i don't think there's any positives here <laughs> they're not dead yeah that's a positive although in that case right live in fear or be dead yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean he seems really good at what he does he talked out his way out of a couple really really tight spots can you imagine the stress though how do you even sleep at night just ulcers all day. All, all day. All day. All day. I mean, no question. And, I mean, just the fact that he also has to deal with and continue to live with a woman who's cheating on him. You know, that, that like, that's his wife. That's his, like, on top of all this other stuff he's dealing with, he's got to deal with that, too. Okay, but so maybe like, they could, like, work it out. Maybe. Maybe bring them closer. I mean, who knows? Who knows? But regardless, this dude has a lot going on, a lot of stress, a lot of really impactful things that he's got to handle. And again, he's like as smooth as jazz when he's dealing with all this shit. Like, I mean, he's a little fidgety, but he's fine. But he's the fine. words, like the fact that he's that quick with the words and says what he needs to say, like he's pretty money. It's pretty crazy. So mm -hmm. do you have any other thoughts before we jump into episode two? Let's go. While your mom is buying us a new house, you two are to plant yourselves here. That is your job. Everything we have of value is in that room. What are we doing here? No one goes in that room whose last name is not Bird. And I'd love to not have to turn the room upside down to find the clicker. <laughs> Priorities. What's our story for the kids? They hear the constant edge in your voice. Well, we could tell them the truth, Wendy. How would that be? Before you get too comfortable up there on your cross, there was an innocent man who was murdered. Gary was a father. He was thrown off his balcony. You shouldn't have emptied all the bank accounts. Right? We are not husband and wife anymore. We're just business partners, and our job's to raise those kids. But you're absolutely right. I should have caught Bruce. I was in charge of the numbers. I should have seen it coming. Why does she get so many texts every night? Why does she have to leave the room to make a phone call? I wonder who's fucking my wife. So that's my bad. I don't forget how you emptied our bank accounts when you knew I needed that money. When you knew I needed it. In fact, the satisfying sound of your lover smacking the pavement is the only thing that gets me to sleep every night. Oh, my God. Oh, oh fuck. Wow, dude. Open the goddamn door. <sighs> wow. Welcome to Ozark. I mean, you had to have known that she wouldn't have taken that comment very well. No, but I mean, at the <laughs> like, same time. Like, she threw that jab. He threw that jab real hard at me. Like, the, the sound of your lover is what puts me to sleep at night. Like, smacking on the pavement. Like, fuck. Hey, housekeeping. Yeah, no need to go in there. Thank you. Tell me again what it is you're doing. I am an angel investor. I, I help turn around struggling businesses. I'm, like, fascinated to see how he even starts this process. I know, right? Like, what... There are a lot of innovative ideas in self-storage. You need money to make money, in my opinion. And I could be that money. Sir, you are delinquent on, on your property taxes, and you, you got those tenants that are suing you. I think there's three of them. Maybe this could work for both of us. I bet it would feel a lot better if I wasn't just an investor and I was also a client. Uh, I'm looking for storage space myself. If that's a unit right there, I will take that big one and I will deal with whatever's on the inside of it. Hundred. You're gonna spend money to make money. That's what I said. Yeah. Alright. Guy cut the tip of a pontoon off, put it on a hinge. Thought he'd smuggle methamphetamines to and fro across the lake. Not a fishing pole or a cooler soda pop for a cover. Let that be a lesson to you. Okay. And what about our business arrangement? No arrangement. You rented storage for me. End of storage. I'm an old dog. New tricks don't appeal to me. Rent's due on the first, Skipper. Well, that didn't work. Me and 
investing in a whole new boat. Yeah. A little better lighting will get more people in. It looks like he's dealing with a lot of people who have been running their businesses for a very long time. Yes. Mom and pop shops that are like set in their ways. Nope, this is the way we do things. So sorry. I know all about that old dog thing because that's my mentality. I don't like change much. Yep. Three and I are going wakeboarding a little bit if you guys want to come along. Leaving in like 20 minutes. Better than sitting around here all day. You can't. You cannot. Do not. Dad said to stay here. What, to guard three iPads and a Pandora bracelet? How about it? Are you kidding me right now? Damn it, child. I think that a, a higher caliber dancer would definitely translate into a higher paying customer. Beautiful girls won't work here. I won't let them. Ain't no payroll. All 1099s, independent contractors. No health insurance, <laughs> vacation time, 401k. Damn, what's in it for them? 25%. Sorry? My cut. You're washing your money. What you doing, ain't it? Whoa! Don't you blame me, Mr. Bird. Got me a real big temper. You do not want to see it get away from me. Damn, he got called out. Legit. <laughs> this dude's just like 25% of what? You come here to clean some money, right? Yeah. It's like, fuck. 2,500 square feet? No way I can afford this. Actually, it's under your budget. I mean, see, he's getting a moment to kind of... Be along. I don't think he's really enjoying the scenery though. No, oh, but shit. I think he... I think it helps a little. No, he's he's no he, okay. No 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 no. Get back. <clears throat> I don't like that. Get back from the. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Ah, heights. Fuck that shit all day. <gasps> no. Oh, and it just disappears. Oh, it just disappears. <sighs> used to be like this. Ah! <laughs> Did you just get an idea? What, he just wants to end it all? Or does he, no, like a business idea. Or is he feeling discouraged? Uh -huh. I'm so pissed. Something's gonna happen and all the, oh God. cause the money's in there, right? Oh no, kid, don't leave. Don't leave. Shit. So wait, you want to remain in the house? I've got a bad heart. A cardiologist tells me that I've got a year, 18 months tops. I'm selling the place under the condition that I be allowed to live here until I die. Any luck, we can go weeks without seeing each other. If this isn't for you, let's say our goodbyes, shall we? If it is, great. Let's call the decider to sign off. Your husband. Like, the idea of him potentially dying with your kids around sounds scary as hell. I mean, it happens. But he even said he could go weeks without seeing him, like... That would be scary. Yeah. I, I would, you know, I would feel really bad if the, the gentleman passed away. I mean, and no one knew about it for weeks. I yeah. almost feel like, obviously he's making, like, the offer for the low price or whatever, but I almost feel like he's being taken advantage of. Right. Like. It's on. This isn't your boat, is it? Snug it up. For what? Quiet, stop. What are you doing? What the hell? Oh, no. Child, please. Oh, God, kid. Hi, I'm Jonah. I'm Tuck. Is it cool? You can have it. You sure? Positive. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh, sweet. They're not her friends. Yeah, and she didn't know that this boat was stolen. Do you know who they are? Wyatt Langmore and his brother, three. Trust me when I tell you, they can't afford to pay. And you're assuming we will. Charlotte painted the picture of my deputy of a girl with some privilege. I'm guessing that your current choice in lodging is a reflection of frugality rather than necessity. 
I'm thinking that arresting the white trash that almost killed my daughter and extracting the truth is hard time consuming work. My guess is that this all comes down to simple run of the mill laziness. Shut up, Marty. How's that? To those intent on leaving a light economic footprint, staying in the cheapest possible places, sucking the tit of this department, or criticizing me in the prosecution of my duties, I say go to fucking Branson. Are you an appointed or an elected official, Sheriff? Elected. Now, I would think that votes would be very valuable around here. I put and a we're deposit looking for down a home. home. Welcome. You're lucky that Charlotte didn't get mixed up with Ruth Langmore. She's 19, smart, mean. You have a picture of Ruth? Don't put down anything around her that you're fond of. Shit. Where'd you get this? A friend. I don't think everyone's I went there. for a I short don't... walk. I took the computers and bracelet with me. Oh, shit. What you fishing for, son? I'm open to suggestions. Catfish. Yeah. Great. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I give you a hundred dollars for uh, for those five catfish? I'm just uh, just getting off to a good start, you know. Here we go. <laughs> Are those the coolers that we saw in the very open? I think so. In case he gets stopped, he needs to actually have some. Hey, I've been fishing. Pro right. Proof. That makes sense. He's smart. He's not just jumping in a boat, rushing out to a place, especially when he's brand new. God, I, this, this <sighs> gives me anxiety. This shit is really intense. That is my money and I've taken it. Relax, relax. What do you think you're gonna do with all of that cash? All that is there is a lifetime supply of groceries and gas. That's mine, and technically, I'm only responsible for it. Well, whose money is it? His name is Omar Navarro. Guy runs a drug cartel, wouldn't trust damn near three million to someone like you. Well, he trusted me with eight. You guys need to know how big this mistake you're making is. The only question you guys need to be asking is, are you murderers? You steal that money, you're gonna have to kill me, because there's another man who works for Mr. Navarro, and he's gonna come to town, he's gonna ask me where that money is, and if I'm still alive, I'm gonna have to tell him that the Langmores stole it. He's gonna find someone with your last name and start removing their skin until he locates the rest of you. So you Fuck. decide right now, once and for all. Case could be made that the disappearance of Mr. Bird and the redistribution of this money constitutes a good thing. Wow, bitch. He's aiding and abetting the sale of drugs. Who knows how much pain and misery he's caused? What wow. What caused? To kids, even. <sighs> wow, she's got balls. Okay. Whoa. Happy. Merle would be happy to sell a slightly used for cash, would he not? Oh, yeah. You think Damn. the IRS radars up the 70 inch Samsungs? I think not. Damn, she's got the guts. And she's smart, too. <laughs> For all this to work, you gotta kill me. Unless you're prepared to kill a family member to keep yourself off death row, you're looking at constant pursuit for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. Good choice. I'm sorry about Charlotte. Not good enough. <laughs> Mr. Navarro will take it back. We're taking 20,000. Get 20. It's a mistake. Deal with it. You deal with it. I almost got that done, didn't I? Why do I have this feeling we both know that you'd be better off dead? Damn! Why do I feel like... Ruth! Why do I feel like he's gonna, like, recruit her to help him? Right? <laughs> Fucking Ruth! Dude. Oh, the yeah, there's... Okay. Yeah, this is the shots from the open. Okay. Dude, she's like a little street savage. Oh, the, oh, okay. It's into the pontoon boat. Oh, dear. Oh, the... Um. Oh, God. <gasps> it's... Oh, shit. 
Those were teeth. The bin carrying the dead bodies got into an art car accident? Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. I mean, the name of the episode is Blue Cat. The insurance payout is a million dollars, okay? You got the money back. You take the kids today. You, you won. How did I win? I lost everything. If I'm dead, we have something. It's simple. You're gonna fucking kill himself? Live off the credit cards until the insurance company pays out, straight. and then you take that You're money, and you start you, you over. Just, you just need more time. No one can wash $8 million down here in three hours. I want you to call the sheriff, and I want you to tell the sheriff that I haven't come back and that you're worried. Okay? Can you say that? I mean, I want you to know about that. I want you to do it. I'm sure I'm worrying over nothing. It's just he he doesn't know the roads here. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Hey, Dad. Where's your mom? Did you send the email? Good. Damn, dude. I wasn't thinking straight. I invest in people. I look for people that are passionate about what they do, and for some reason, they haven't found success. You invest, and then we go and we remodel some units. And come June, business improves incrementally, and I take a little more money. And it's better than nothing, but it's still not enough to service the debt on the loan I already owe the bank, a loan secured by the mortgage on this property. And then before you know it, it's Labor Day, and I'm in hock to you and the bank. I don't need you for that, Marty, because I can fuck things up all by myself. So get out. Feels like she's been through this yeah. before. Right? He's not going to give up on this spot, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> he literally opens yeah. the car door back up. Look, you are, without a doubt, the biggest retard I've ever seen. <gasps> Don't use that word. What the hell's the matter with you? You're telling me what I can and can't say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I give that lesson to my kids, I get it right away. Damn right, dude. I mean, why does he have to feel bad just so you can feel good? I won't tolerate it. You won't tolerate it. <laughs> now, I want you to apologize to that young man right now. You miserable redneck. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Cocksucker. <laughs> Damn, all right, I think that too. <laughs> well? Message not received. And Marty just got knocked the fuck, fuck out. out. <laughs> Damn, dude. Mom, what are we doing here? Your father's laundering money for a Mexican drug cartel. Dang. I shit you not. Hello, Mr. Diker. Oh, she just fucking just, just threw it out there like. And that's the end? <laughs> that's the end of that Oh my episode. God, I really like this show. By Holy the way. shit, dude. She's just like, yeah, you know. This is, a, this, it is what it is, kids. To fucking get your wrap your head around that shit. Dang. I don't know how you could. <laughs> at that age, I was like, yeah, at fifteen, I, I would not was like, what does that even mean at fifteen? Like, I don't. <laughs> Go, uh, reference back to uh, Office Space dictionary: how yeah. to launder money. Right. It's like, <laughs> what, dude? That I mean. The way they're acting, there's a shit ton of suspicion. Like, why do we have to sit in the hotel the whole time? Why do we have to watch everything? Yeah. Why this and why that? And now they're, like, buying a house with some old dude who's going to die in a year, give or take. Well, she she didn't say die. Well, she said she's going to be staying there for yeah. a year or so. But, like, the daughter finally just caught on. She's like, what are we doing here? Like, what? What is this? Yeah, and... 
You know, she's just like, all right, well, your father is a money launderer for a really big Mexican cartel. Shit, you not. <laughs> How did he get into this shit? Is it because I, of Bruce? I don't know. I hope they kind of do more backstory on it. I'm kind of interested, but... Like, how in the hell? I'm really fascinated to see how he's going to make this work. If he can make it work. Because we saw him hitting up all the local businesses. None of these folks are into it. Even the strip joints, like... Like, you ain't laundering money, dude. I know what you're doing. Yeah. And it's like, they're all just totally set in their ways. They're people who've probably lived there their entire lives, been running their businesses forever. And they're like, nah, man, like, you ain't coming in here investing and but, taking over and then us owing you a bunch of money. But at Blue Cat, I, I see what he was doing there. As soon as he saw that she was walking in, it's like, I'm a good person. Right. I give a shit about this totally. business. We'll see if the knockout ends up being worth it. We'll see. I think it's going to be worth it. I think... The him him defending. Well, it makes sense. It would make sense that it would it would work with yeah. this show. Okay, after watching however many shows we watch, you kind of <laughs> get the gist right. of when somebody's gonna do something. Totally. I and would hope to by now, folks. Right. It's just gonna be really like again. I'm fascinated at the start of this whole process. I want to see how he gets this going. How does it work? How's he doing it? Obviously, we've seen this situation play out with another show using a car wash, but I want to see how he's going to do it under these circumstances. What if he goes back to the strip club? I don't... Hmm. Because if the guy already knows that the jig is up... He's going to give up 20, an extra 25%. That ain't happening. There's no way. But the thing is... This obviously seems like a small town where everyone knows each other. Like, is the, is the, like, the strip club dude going to be like, oh, you invested in that place? Oh, all of a sudden this place is getting under, like a whole facelift? Like, is I think it's... say something? I think it'd be kind of obvious that like, oh, all of a sudden the blue cat got all this new stuff and like all this new business and new signs and this and that. And like now business is doing well all of a sudden, like... The guy who's called his bluff, I think, is going to be paying attention. I get the vibe. And the family. Like, he's going to run into that family everywhere he goes. Well, hopefully he can get the $20,000 back, fucking jerks. I mean, that's going to be a really interesting situation. Like, hey, Dell. Ruth uh, is n wild. I could totally see him getting the Ruth cojones involved. Cojones on this chick, oh, man. And like she's got it. She was smart. She's got it. She knows what the fuck is up. I would man. totally not be surprised at all if Marty somehow brought her in. Like became like a business associate or some shit. I mean, <laughs> like she like she's a terrible little person, but she presented a really really valid like argument as to why they should have kept all of it. I just think the rest of the fam is just like, we're not going to fucking do that. <laughs> like, we're, that's so far above us. Like, we're not doing all that. Like, get it's out of here. above my pay grade. Like, but Marty's response, obviously he's been doing this a while and has experience dealing with that type of scenario and he just was able to convince the rest of the family and even she was like, I almost got you. I got, that was almost that was almost close, right? And it was like, yeah, you probably were really close. <laughs> like, if the dad was willing to just shoot him right there, that, yeah, done deal. <laughs> but they don't want to be murdered. They don't want to kill the dude. Like, they're not interested in that. A, I think it takes a certain kind of person to commit murder. Uh, yeah. They it, just didn't seem like that type of no, folk. They didn't want to cross that line. They just want some money, yeah, man. They, they didn't want to cross that line. No. But this is... <sighs> This is going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out. I really, really like just the foundation that's being built. Like, obviously, episode one was complete, just nutty, balls to the wall, just constant, just like a mess. A lot of balls in this. Just absolutely crazy. This one, obviously, was, was a little bit more kind of like, all right, we're going to set this foundation now. We're here. He's doing his meetings. He's trying to figure out what his plan is. But then they throw in the fact that the bins, the, the truck that was carrying the dead bodies, got into an accident, and they found teeth, and now the investigators... That's nervous. Like, that one investigator dude was like, he has this whole thing figured out, it seems like. 
He has his he whole plan. Include his partner. That's so fucked, man. Yeah, he, he's gonna set his career off. Yeah. Like, all right, whatever, dude. But it's like, you sure you're, you know exactly who you're messing with here? Like, you know what you're dealing with? Because you know, you're fucking with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, he made it sound real easy. He's like, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and he went there to do this, this, and this, and I'm gonna do this, and boom, done. It's like, mm, I don't think so. I don't think the the cartel's going to cooperate that easily with your little investigation. Correct. And the moment this dude shows up into town, I feel like that's gonna just cause even more chaos because the people of this of this area are going to start kind of realizing that something is wrong, something is off. Yeah. It's like obviously a lot of maybe tourists coming to town for holiday stuff and, and vacationing and stuff like that, but And this is no offense to the Blue Cat Lodge, but you best believe I would not wanna stay there. It looks <laughs> it looks like it's literally falling apart. Well there's no gas. I mean, they don't, like, like a lot of those places are just run down. They don't have any money and they don't have anybody to support or, like, they've got no way of, like, cleaning it up and building it up, which is, you know. It's sad. It, yeah, it it's is sad. It's extremely sad. Yeah. I would, honestly, I mean, if it was, like, a full-on, like, cabin experience, that would be dope as hell. I would totally want to that stay there. That place is really, really nice looking. But the outside. It looks amazing. Where it's at, yeah. awesome. The inside. They're just struggling economically. Yes. I get it. But, like, won't it raise a shit ton of red flags if, like... If it's all of a sudden real spiffy? Like, $300,000 gets invested in this one place, and the blue cat just turns into this super nice, awesome okay, location. but I feel like it's good for the whole town. Oh, of course it would if be. You, if you, but it's not going to be legit, so it's not going to be... Especially lodging. <laughs> it, you know, fancy the place up, because, you know, it's got... You could, like, take the boats out and do mm -hmm. all that stuff at the blue cat lodge. Sure. There's a bar, there's a grill... All that fun stuff, like you get, you know, all in one adventure. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. everybody would want to come and stay there, and yeah. it would bring money to the whole rest of the town. Yeah. So then everybody could have nice things for sure. But that's not. It's not going to be legitimate. I know. <laughs> I Marty's know. not a Marty's not coming in there to legitimately invest in a business. I get like, that. So it just it just kind of like I just I feel bad for the small businesses out there, man. Yeah, and it, I I just like after kind of getting an episode with these people, it almost makes me feel bad that this is getting brought there. Like obviously they're struggling they're struggling with the money aspect of it, but they all seemed content with how their life is and how their town is and all the stuff that they're doing. But regardless, it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this takes place and. Like, how do you keep the red flags from going up? Because, I mean, you put that much money into a place like that, and it's just going to be so obvious what's going on. Right. Especially considering where he came from and what happened where he came from, especially now that, you know, teeth were found. That, but I just, every single time you even bring that up, it's like, oh, God. Yeah, that's just... They found teeth. That's just so insane. And the fact that he was close to the point of... Jumping off that cliff just to just... Even having dreams about it. Like, that's just so wild. And it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Like, there's no way he's having any restless moments. Even sitting on that cliff with that beautiful view, his thought was about ending everything. Like, that's just absolutely tragic and horrible. So, this show is off to a really, really crazy start. I like it. These first two episodes have been absolutely insane. You like and, it? Oh, I think it's. I I'm super intrigued. I, I my head is spinning about all the p possibilities about what could play out. Yeah. And it just it all sounds super fascinating and it interesting. Feel, I feel like so much gets done in one episode. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, they they laid the entire foundation for his potential plan in this town. Yeah. In this episode, and we got to meet a whole lot of people who live there, who work there, all that stuff, like. The storage place guy, the the strip club dude, the Ruth. the blue the blue cat, and the dude who's selling his house. Like we got to meet a lot of the people and see what we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he sticks out like a sore thumb. One hundred percent. So one hundred percent. It's gonna it's gonna be really interesting to see how. Like, I just want to see it from start, like, and how he starts building this whole thing up, and how he starts getting 
the business running, how he invests in it, how he keeps it from like becoming a problem. <laughs> like, cause that's, it, it, again, it's going to stick out. It's going to be obvious that some random dude with money came in here and just put a shit ton of it into one of the local businesses. And why that'd be like, if I live there and I, I'd probably be happy, but I, I would be like, why is this happening? Like, why, why did this dude come here to do that yeah. kind of thing? So yeah. I'm fascinated to see where this goes. Again, I love theories. I love coming up with ideas and guessing. And yeah, I just can't wait to see where this goes. So any other thoughts? No. Nope. All right, y'all. Leave them comments down below. Leave your thoughts. Like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. And we'll catch y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.